Welcome everybody to church today. Right away, let's dismiss the kids before anybody grabs a seat. Kids, you are dismissed to go to Genesis Kids. Go ahead, go ahead. And everybody else can take a seat after the kids have cleared your row. Look at them go. They're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to have a lot of fun today, too. I just want to welcome everybody to church today. Uh, we have a very special celebration Sunday this morning. My name is Johnny Whitcomb. I am the students pastor here at Genesis here in Petoskey. Um, and I'm thankful that you guys are here, especially if you're a guest today. We have a super special Sunday service today, um, not like a normal one. Also, if you want to move into the middle of the row, there's still people um, trying to find seats. And so if there's seats around you, raise your hand, wave it around, tell them th there's seats for you available. But like I said, we have a special Sunday. Um, if you're watching online, welcome. We're glad that you're here, too. Um, if you're new for the first time ever, um, we're really, really thankful that you decided to come and visit us. Um, I know what it's like to visit a new church. It can be daunting. So we hope that you felt welcome. We hope that you felt loved. We hope you got a handshake, a hug, whatever was appropriate to make you feel like you were at home today. Um, and we're glad that you're here. If you look in the seat backs in front of you, there are welcome cards. You can fill one of those out. We just want to know um, who you are and what brought you in today. Um, and if you want, you can put those in the giving baskets in the back or bring them to the Welcome Center after service. So thank you for that. Also, we have a free gift and we also have some apps. So there's an app that you can fill out um, online by texting 77977. You text Genesis app, all one word, and you'll get our app. We also have a Genesis text, so you can text us if you've got questions, comments, critiques, gentle critiques. Um, we'll take those two at 231-412-2866. Uh, so get out your phone if you want to be able to text Genesis Church, um, anything that you need there. Uh, also, uh, just a special announcement, if you're going to get your kids today and you're trying to go to the flex room to get them, they're not going to be there because we've got something special planned for after service. So when you go to get your kids, I want you to come out into the lobby and then turn right because they're going to be down in the youth room one day only just today. So there's that. Um, at this time, everybody turn to your neighbors, say hey. Yeah, there you go. Um, stand up, greet some people, meet them a little bit, and uh, we're going to be watching a video real quick. seat. If you can grab your seat real quick. Um, we have a video testimony we want to play for everybody today. Um, so take a look at the screens. You know, I remember a conversation that I had with Norm and I think some of the other elders in this church. And um, I believe Norm was telling us that one of his friends that has gone through a campaign similar to this to build a building said that your church has to go through this process. And it wasn't necessarily so that we have a building in the end, but it was that it would teach us that this process would teach us how to be generous in ways that we have never even imagined that we could. And this is what we have seen in our church. And this is what I think um, touches me the most about this whole process is to see that even in the midst of people stretching themselves to pour into building this building, even at the end of the year campaign, people were pouring out extra money to help so many needs around the world and locally and regionally. And so it's it's been so fun to see God move in that way in our hearts, in all of our hearts, and, um, and, and for that to just continue to grow and blossom. Um, because if our church is known by anything, I would love for it to be known as being a generous church. And I think that um, it's already on its way um, down that path. So it's it's a really cool thing.
Hello. Right here. Okay, good. So uh, 2500 B.C., a long time ago, we're going to read this passage, Genesis chapter 22. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up, loaded his donkey, and he took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and himself carried the fire and the knife. And the two of them went on together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac asked, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went up together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. This is God's word. You can be seated. Where God guides, he provides. Today we want, just want to take a few moments here. We're celebrating the way God works, and we want to look at how God works. And first of all, the way God works is God speaks. He speaks. God spoke to Abraham. He spoke verbally to Abraham, authoritatively to Abraham. Now, it's very troubling what God spoke to Abraham. He was testing him. But today, God speaks through his word. He speaks authoritatively through his word. God also speaks today through circumstances and through his people. And here's the connection point. God spoke to us here at Genesis Church. God has been speaking to us. He has given us a vision, a vision of something that could be, something that should be. And part of that vision was a facility, a facility in the center of our community, not outside of the community, not five miles down the road on our own compound or something like that, but a facility in the center of our community because we love our community with a twofold purpose. First of all, to equip Christians to help followers of Jesus be ready. Be ready for what? Be ready for their mission, to be trained to do what God is calling them to do in their circles of influence. And secondly, 
The second purpose of this facility in the center of our community uh, to, uh, is to engage the community, to engage our neighbors, to not again be outside, but be inside the community and to share, to share what God has given us. Some of you know Heather Van Heitzma. Raise your hand if you know Heather Van Heitzma here. So, several of you do. Yeah, give her a big hand. She's worthy of a big hand. Years ago, I will never forget it, we were, before we uh, just started, you know, kind of meeting, um, meeting in the Pennsylvania park in the summer, and I remember her saying, I really like this, that we do this, because Genesis Church, we're not intrusive, but accessible. Not intrusive to people, but accessible, and that's what we want to be. That's, that's a part of this vision is that we will engage the community. We're not going to intrude, but we want them to have accessibility. And you see, God spoke to us. He uh, has invited us. He continues to invite us to be a part of what he is doing, what he was doing. And it's important to say that God is still speaking. God is still speaking. God is speaking to his people. He's still inviting us and still calling us uh, to walk by faith. So it's important to hear God and obey him. And I just want to encourage you. God may be saying something to you, and my question is, are you following him? Are you, are you uh, following after him? So we want to celebrate today that God speaks. And we want to ask the question, you know, and, and those of you that have been a part of this process, I want to ask you, what's next? What is next? What is God saying to you now about what is next? So God works, secondly, through the obedience and dependence of his people. God chooses to work through the obedience and dependence of his people. He doesn't have to. He could just do it. <laughs> but God doesn't roll that way. He has chosen, after the counsel of his own will, to use a people who would obey him and would be dependent on him. It's essential to obey the Lord when he says something to you. And it's essential to depend on him in faith. And when we do that, when we obey him when he calls us, and when we depend on him, we get to experience him in powerful ways. Many people miss out on that in their lives because they're, they're filled with fear uh, to obey God. They're, they're filled with uh, too many other priorities to do what he calls them to do. Abraham is famous in the scripture. If you study the scripture, you'll see this over and over in the scripture. It, the scripture says this, and Abraham believed God. Say it with me. And Abraham believed God. One more time. And Abraham believed God. Uh, you see it in his obedience. Again, God is telling him to do something very troubling. To take his son to the region of Moriah and, and for a sacrifice. He did not understand it all, but he followed the Lord. He followed the Lord's instruction. And, and also Abraham's dependence on God. He's dependent on him. Even though he could not see God's provision, he trusted God's character. Do you trust God's character? He trusted God's provision. Um, just two verses real quick on this. Uh, verse, uh, 20, or verse 5 of that chapter 22, Genesis, that I read earlier. He said to his servant, stay here with the donkeys while I and the boy go over there. We will worship the Lord, and then we will come back to you. He depended on God's provision. A little later, remember, Isaac is like, yo, Dad, uh, we got the wood, and here's the knife, and here's how we're going to start it, but, like, where's the lamb? <laughs> And what does Abraham say? Abraham answers, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two walked on together. You see, my friends, where God guides, he provides. Uh, I'm going to put a number up on the screen for you. 164. There were 164 giving units <laughs> That sounds like a very sterile way of saying this, doesn't it? 164 uh, families, individuals, and organizations that sensed God's calling and gave to this project. Let's give glory to the Lord for that. 
You see, God spoke to them. They heard and they got on board. They got on board what God was calling them to do. And, you know, I've I've raised some money in my day. I've planted some churches that demanded raising uh, money. And I just want to tell you this. No one just gives money away. Okay? If someone here thinks that it's easy to raise money and people just give it away, then they're not experienced in raising money because it's hard. It is really hard. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, there's a joke that when you come to Jesus, when you come to know Jesus and follow him, the last thing to be converted is your wallet. Okay? So it's not easy to raise money. It's not easy to get people on board with things. And that's what makes this really um, so exciting to me is that God spoke to people. And people made sacrifices. They decided to delay projects. They decided to forego a new purchase. They made other sacrifices. And, and it's a mark of maturity. And I thank God for that. I praise his holy name. Not only obedience to what God calls, but those that have been involved have had to depend on God to show up. Maybe they pushed the envelope on what they were giving, and they had to, God had to show up. We heard a story last week of that. Um, another way of looking at this is that not one of the gifts that came in or one of the giving units that collectively gave, because uh, several people, 120 families or so, pledged to give over three years, um, but not one of those giving units or gifts could do the project. We wouldn't have started the project with just one of those. And so it took a collection of people hearing from God and deciding to do that together. And uh, here's the number God provided through his call on people's lives. I just want to put it up on the screen. 2,165,833 and 55 cents. We wanted to get the 55 cents part up there. It's important because... God moved in people's hearts, and that is the amount that came in for all the projects to build and furnish the Genesis Center. So we're celebrating today. A big group of people heard from the Lord and got on board and generously gave while depending on God, and God has provided. When you get a sense that God is calling you to give financially to something, or to give of yourself in other ways. I just want to tell you, run towards it. Don't run away from it. Run towards it in faith. God is building something in you. He's building something alive. He's building a capacity for generosity that, will, can, that can continue into the future. So here's the last part. The last part of this, God speaks and then God works through the obedience and the dependence of his people. It's just how he chooses to work. He's gracious in inviting us in. The last part is this, that God blesses others when his people follow him. God blesses others. Now, we get blessed because we get to, be, get to know him and be a part of it, but he blesses others. Um, so let's look at this verse here. After Abraham heard and obeyed, this is what it says here, Genesis 22, verse 18, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. This is how God works. See, Abraham obeyed, and his obedience resulted in the blessing of many other people. By Abraham obeying, he would, in essence, outlive his life. Now, I've kind of thought about that that uh, the position of this facility that God has provided, um, that we got to be a part of, it's going to be here a long time after I'm gone. I, I presume it will be. And um, as long as uh, one of the big calls to this church is to make sure we have solid leadership that's gospel-centered in the years to come. But it just it brings a lot of joy to my heart to think that years from now, when I'm not here, that there will be a lighthouse on this school campus. There will be um, 
a place engaging non-followers of Jesus and followers of Jesus to help them become everything that they can be. And that excites me. That brings me a lot of joy. When we obey him, we get the pleasure of knowing him more and being a blessing to others. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? You know, we've done this project, and now we're done, and now it's like, now we can just skate. <laughs> we can just kick back, right? Uh, no. Uh, no, we, uh, you know, God is speaking. He still speaks, as I said earlier. And the big question is, what is he saying to you? What is he saying to you today? Some of you were a part of this project and now you have a new understanding of generosity that you didn't have before. You now kind of see it on the other side. And, and that's exciting. God has cr- built something in you. He's created something in you. And now, now we can't go back. We can't go back to the way it was before. And we just, the, where we go from here is we need to be asking, you know, what is next, God? What do you want me to pour myself into? What what do you want me to invest into in a sacrificial way, in a generous way, God? And there are so many needs in our community. There's so many needs in our region and all the way around the world. Now, some of you here, you're new. You weren't a part of the project. You're, you're benefiting from it, and it's great, and it's wonderful. And uh, some, maybe you were here, but you just it wasn't the right timing for you to be to get on board uh, with the project, and that that's totally fine and God works in people's lives over time. And uh, I want to put another number up on the screen here. This is the last number I'm going to show you. <laughs> and it's just the, the number to pay off the facility is $552,660,000. What is still owed on the building? And, uh, um, you know, if you have any questions about, like, the finances or anything like that, you can text those questions or go out to the information center, one of our uh, deacons of finance will be out there, Bill McMaster's at the end of the, the gathering time. But the lower that that number goes, the higher our number for giving as a church can go. And as I said, there are some big needs in our community that I believe God wants to use Genesis to help address. I mean, there's some big things that we won't address on our own, but we can be a leader in our community. I mean, things like lower income housing. I mean, there's just not a lot of it. I'm personally experiencing that with, a, a, with someone in my family. Uh, affordable daycare. Uh, more programming for students. Also, regionally, we need more churches. We need more churches that will be gospel-centered and connect with their community deeply. And we need to continue to minister to orphans and Muslims. So I want to uh, encourage you Whatever is God is calling you towards, run towards it with a generous heart. So I want you to see this next video. This just kind of gives a few of the people that participated in the project. Let's watch that right now. The reason that we wanted to be a part of this uh, building project and uh, really to help Genesis establish roots in the community is when we first came here in 2012, Uh, They were meeting at the college, Genesis Church was, and then it was the high school and the middle school and back and forth. And we really uh, were excited when they announced that they had property on the campus of, you know, Petoskey Schools and just to be a part of that. And so we were excited to, after prayerful consideration, being a part of the pledge in building campaign and just being able to see the effect in the community. And I did have that reoccurring thought of uh, the Field of Dreams movie, if, if you build it, they will come. And I think we've seen that in, in, you know, in uh, great numbers of people coming here and being a part. And you can't miss it as you drive down Northland Drive, and I think that's just awesome. Um, I've been coming to Genesis for a long time, and uh, when Carrie and I met, we started coming to Genesis together way back in the day when we were meeting at the movie theater. And I think for us, it was kind of seeing uh, some of the, and being involved on setup teams and like the band and stuff, seeing like, all the energy put into just like existing uh, that seemed like it was time to take the next step and be able to have a facility that allowed us to give back to the community in new ways uh, so we could be a little bit more outward focused. Ever since I decided to follow Christ I've just always been looking for opportunities to look where he's already at work and try to join in Um, and since I've been a part of Genesis as a church I've seen that going on all along Um, and so when the opportunity came for Genesis 
to have um, to build a center and to have a place where we could gather and meet consistently. I was excited about that, but more so I was excited about what that could do in our community. Um, I just see you know, God really at work here in our community and I see Genesis being a part of that. And I, see, I saw the um, opportunity and Seth and I both talked and prayed about um, you know, would being a part of this, what would that mean? And um, it meant that we could get on board with something that God was already um, at work doing and we could just become a part of it. And so we decided together that we would um, financially support that. Is It's a direct correlation between what, what where your treasure is is where your heart will be also. And, and I just look at that as a biblical um, uh, personal belief in myself and I just believe and that's what we need to do and that's where it should go and this is such a great group of people that I meet and see especially everywhere so that is that is what I, I truly believe My name is Andrea Skydema. I'm one of the missions deacons here at Genesis, and I am just so excited about today. Best day ever, celebrating God's faithfulness, celebrating the generosity of this congregation, um, and just the faithfulness that God has shown us through our many gifts. Um, I have to say, being in this building is amazing. I, When I come here, this feels like home to me. My family moved up here um, from Grand Rapids about three and a half years ago, and it's amazing to me now that coming into this building, it feels like home. It's actually sometimes nicer because there are no toys and there are not Legos all over the floor. <laughs> it's much cleaner and more organized, but seriously, this place is like home to us. It's been a great place to grow and to be challenged, and the sense of communities and the friendships here have been amazing, um, and I hope that you're feeling that too. Um, but what I find even more impressive and amazing about Genesis isn't just what happens inside this building, but who we are to people outside of this building. This church doesn't exist just for us. We exist in large part for the people who never walk through our doors. Uh, those are people in our community and also people around the world. So I'm up here this morning just to share with you some specific and tangible examples of how through this building project, we have been a blessing to our community. You know, we didn't start this building project with the idea that, okay, once we get, you know, X amount paid for, then we will give to the Nehemiah Project or help out with other people. You know, it's easy to do that, right? Like, I need to get my car, I want to get my house and get this stuff paid for, and then, you know, if I have leftover money, I'll follow God's call to give. But that's not who Genesis is. We've always valued open-handed generosity, and it's really cool for me to look back and see you know, just how uh, the finance team, everybody here has trusted God throughout the process. So just looking back, these are five or six examples of in 2019. This is, these examples that I'm going to read are in addition to our uh, regular um, targeted budgeting giving. So in this past year, you know, we asked for uh, $2,500 we were hoping to give to a classroom for the Pregnancy Care Center. Um, we also recently found out from them that they needed a new ultrasound machine. They'd been having to turn away uh, mothers who wanted to get an ultrasound because their machine was broken. And that was a huge cost. Uh, we had enough money to give them not $2,500, but we just sent them a check for $13,200, and they're able to get that ultrasound machine now. Yeah. Totally unexpected. QuestScope, I think you remember we were looking to support refugee families, primarily female-headed households in Syria and Jordan, to provide education and mentoring. We were hoping for $15,000. We just sent them a check for $23,000. Yeah. Ghana Christian Mission, we talked about, um, you know, it'd be great if we could raise $10,000. And these are all huge numbers, by the way. I mean, these were ridiculous things to ask for. Uh, we were, <laughs> I mean, ridiculous amounts of money. Uh, we were hoping to provide 900 Bibles in nine different languages. Uh, we thought, you know, we'll ask for $10,000. We just sent them a check for $15,000. And, yeah, pretty awesome. Orphan helpers, you know, we support them regularly. That's part of our budget. Uh, we had enough money extra to send them $3,000, and what that money is going towards is service projects in juvenile detention centers. So picture this. 
These are gang members. These are MS-13 and 18th Street gang members in juvenile detention centers in El Salvador and Honduras who want to be able to do service projects. These are gang members who have become Christians and they want to do service projects to meet the needs of other gang members in the prisons. Genesis sent $3,000. We're going to be funding those service projects so that these kids can give back to their own communities in the name of Jesus. That's going to be starting next month, uh, thanks to Genesis. Yeah. We also had some money this past spring to fund um, part of a, we helped fund a migrant party that welcomed over 70 migrant workers in the Petoskey area, migrant workers from Mexico and Puerto Rico. Some of those guys told me we've never been welcomed in a community like this before. We hired a caterer, we had games. Um, it was, to me, just an amazing way to show God's love. We also found out from the Nehemiah Project that their roof was falling apart. Oh, yeah, I mean, this isn't part of their budget. They have no government funding. It's all privately funded at Nehemiah Project, our local homeless shelter. So we were able to repair that roof for them, no longer getting ice jams, no longer getting leaks. Uh, and we were able to get them the money before winter came. Um, so that was over $2,000 to give to them. All of those things I just said were in addition to our regularly targeted giving. Uh, we also gave over $30,000 to our regular partners, such as Safe Families, Young Life, Orphan Helpers, Pregnancy Care Center, and the Nehemiah House. Um, and there's still more. Um, that, my friends, is open-handed open -handed generosity. And um, that's what we're here to celebrate this morning. I would just love to encourage you, if you call this place your church home, even if you don't, to consider how you can stretch yourself um, to give. You know, if you if you give to Genesis, we're not buying fancy chandeliers. We're not buying uh, Norm or Scott an, an airplane. Um, <laughs> if, we, if we have extra money, we are constantly in communication with our Kingdom Network partners about what their needs are, and we do what we can to meet those needs. Um, so I just encourage you to put yourself in a position where you have to trust God. Um, my family, actually, we're going through some interest some difficulties some challenges right now um just in our family and my husband said to me the other day you know it's it's not easy like this kind of stinks it really stinks but in a way it's really freeing to be in a place where you have to trust god right and i think when we like norm talked about the giving when we when we make that decision to take a risk and to give and to trust god that he's going to do something with our money and our talents um we are so blessed with the rewards and just seeing God's faithfulness through that. So uh, even if you have $20, you know, to give, that might seem like a small gift. I just read a lot of big numbers. But let me tell you, $20 combined with other people's gifts to, to get an ultrasound machine so that somebody can see their baby for the first time or, you know, $20 that can go to buy a Bible and a workbook to a kid in a, who's been in a gang and never had anyone believe in him, you know, in this prison who now gets to hear about Jesus. Those are, those are huge. Um, so I'm just here to tell you that um, your gifts, big or small, are making a huge impact in our community, and I want to encourage you to continue giving. This is who we are. We are open-handed, and we are generous. And if you call this place your home, um, just stretch yourself to see how you can join in. Um, all that said, um, we also have a video of how our building is being used in in our own community. So they just kind of looked at what's happening, you know, out, but how is this building actually being used to be a blessing? So take a look. Hey, Genesis, uh, I'm Jake Tracy, and this is Maya Rudy. And I'm the area director for Young Life Little Traverse Bay, and Jake is a team leader for Wildlife, which means middle school ministry with Young Life, and he uses the Genesis Center every single week. Our mission is to introduce adolescents to Jesus and help them grow in their faith. And that's what we do here every Thursday after school. There's kids running around behind us literally as we speak. And it's such a joy and honor to be able to be silly and play games and also present the gospel to these kids on a consistent basis in a safe place that's close and connected to the community. So thank you for helping make that happen. Yeah. Uh, the church, Genesis Church has given us the opportunity to use their facilities for for training our children in the, in the martial arts, uh, giving them an education in how to be aware of their surroundings uh, around uh, the well, their well-being for self self-defense. Also, it uh, it kind of works in conjunction with what I'm doing with Pride for Christ of Michigan. Actually, we are now uh, 
Karate for Christ uh, outreach ministries because we are now in like about three or four different states as well. Um, so we like to use the martial arts to bring Christ to the homes, to the children who may not otherwise uh, receive it or hear it. And uh, bringing them here to this church is another opportunity to get them in the church so they can see the surroundings as well as, as far as what the goings on are about Christianity in that community.
I know I've got a ooh, whoa, I know I've got a big loud voice. Sorry about that. Let us go to um, the Lord in prayer because today is the day we need to raise an hallelujah. That's for sure. What an amazing day of rejoicing. But let us not rejoice in what we have done. Let us rejoice in what God has done. So pray with me. Heavenly Father, we raise an hallelujah. We raise an hallelujah because of your goodness. We raise an hallelujah because of your grace. We thank you. you. You would be alive in this community with or without this building. But Lord, you wanted this building. And we know it did not just all fall into place. People had to open their hands. People had to take on the counsel for this one. I was at a party recently where I heard two people discussing that it wasn't a good use of the space. It should have went to some sort of housing or something. And I wanted to say, no, this is the best use of space. And Lord, you knew that. You knew that Genesis was to be here, right here on this dirt. And Lord, we thank you that you invite us in so that we can gather together, learn more about you, and then go out. I just love that notion that you are sending us, and and this is just a launch pad. I love the fact that it's also a place for people to come, people who are hurting, people who are lonely, people who are looking to belong. Lord, we just pray that our church can be that as well. Lord, we want it to be a place where we gather in your name and we give you honor and we give you glory. So some of us are jumping up and down today going, I raise an hallelujah, thank you God, you are good. But Lord, I also know there are people that are gathered here that are not feeling this goodness. But God, you are faithful. You are faithful. And this, this church and this building is just a symbol of that faithfulness. And so, Lord, we look forward to the year ahead. Come, Holy Spirit, flood this place. Set our hearts on fire. Use the army that is gathered here today. And, Lord, we just pray we go in your name and that this just be our springboard to jump out and go do in this community and around the world. So, Lord, I'm excited, and I know you're excited about what's going to happen in 2020. Lord, lead us, give us ears to hear your calling on each of our lives. We just thank and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.